Um, yeah, I agree. Engineer's induction sounds real good. So what about 4x4? Also, I don't... I'm not totally convinced that the fact that it's a square versus a rectangle should matter. Okay, what do I do for Aniklas 4? Help. Um... So you can always get an end moves by doing this operation. So you, you hit the odd rows, and then you hit the odd columns. So can always do... can do an end moves. I wouldn't be surprised if the answer was just fine. Um, This is for N even, yeah. I the answer might be different for N odd. Actually it's definitely different for N odd. Um Yeah yeah. Like for N equals L one the answer is zero, and for N equals three the answer is like two. So like two yeah, two four in house. But I just looked up engineer's induction. <laughs> How's that ever? <laughs> hey, getting the numerical answer seems pretty good. Yeah, I bet it's two floor and halves in general. Um, how do you show the bound though? Three by three is three. Uh, oh, sorry, it's sorry. You're you're correct. Three by three should be three. Maybe what I can do is try to, um... So when I look at pairs of adjacent cells, there needs to, for every, if I take pairs of adjacent cells or something, there's all, you need a rectangle that hits exactly one of them and not the other. So what if I do like, like, can I find, like, n pairs of cells such that every rectangle splits at most one of them? The answer might be yes. Uh... That's the... okay. 
No, that's not true. Th this one will break both of them. Does a binary argument work with XOR operation? How does that work? Did we do Tournament of Tones? Um, no, we spent the entire time getting wrecked <laughs> by uh, the, the... whatever it's called. Yeah, I, I definitely like this perimeter idea though, that this the idea that like, um, I want to draw rectangles such that I, I want to draw some green edges, I guess, such that each rectangle breaks at most so and so many of them, and then use that as a global sum. That's a strange equality, guys. Um, f N equals three, give two, the middle row and call. Oh! <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that. Two shape. I feel like I can get a bound that's like not awful if I like like if I draw the rectangles the every blue edge of the grid other than the corners does need to be hit by something the problem is that there's um like some rectangles are bigger than others so they will apparently break more cover more blue edges, but that doesn't necessarily make them better. So I want to do something such that like each rectangle doesn't... I want to like pick 8 special blue edges such that rectangles can't break more than like a few of them. I wouldn't be surprised if you could get M by N, um, but also... I don't see why that would help. It doesn't feel like it should help with the induction. Or I, I don't, it doesn't feel like an induction to me or something. Like it feels like if I delete a row or column that doesn't play naturally with any of the, with any of the operations or something.
If you can arbitrate rectangle that, aren't you just keeping the same amount of work? I'm not sure I follow what you mean. Like, I have an example drawn for n equals 4 where two of the operations are on 2x2 two two squares. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many equality cases, it's like... Like, I really want to count... from R to even. Like, but like, how are you going to conduct though? Like... <sighs> how common are trick substitutions? I think it depends on the Olympiad. And uh, the perimeters thing seems so good. The problem is that the rectangles can just have different perimeters, which seems really sad. So why is it that if they have different perimeters, they still resolve to the same thing? That, that doesn't seem right to me.
Repeated edges in the rectangles are not good things, right? Uh, or something like that. Like, I actually need the condition that every edge is in exactly one rectangle. Or in... Yeah, every edge actually has to be in exactly one rectangle. Um... Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I think like this picture. I think this picture is definitely the right way to think about it. Now, the more I think about it, the more I like this idea. Where what I want to really think about it is rather than a checkerboard pattern, um, I want to draw n rectangles, or I want to show I can't draw fewer than n rectangles, such that the result is like a grid, where like each of these edges is in like exactly one rectangle. And you, you have some leeway on the edges, like the, the very boundary can do weird things, but other than that, it has to be exactly this. Yeah, so the double counting is actually quite accurate. Um, Thank you, Extreme Co. for the follow. So let's do the following. Um, suppose I have K rectangles. Each rectangle can has at most one side which is full length. And at there are um, 2n minus 2. Things there are there are two n minus two I don't like it. <laughs> Shoot. Uh 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 The full length has changed because I think <sighs> Oh, actually either it's full length or it's half okay. So they're carry rectangles and rectangles I can classify into two things. Uh, I classify them into two types. Um, so full length rectangles. Uh, they they span from one edge of the board to the other. They completely cover two grid lines, but one of the but the other two sides are useless. Also, uh, uh, none of which are n by n. So there's, I'm gonna not consider a rectangle which is n by n because it's useless, and then partial rectangles. Um, which, um, 
Each of the four sides could partially cover something. So each of the four sides can partially cover two grid lines, but... Each grid line... So any grid line... So by grid line I mean like the entire thing that stretches from one end to another. So I mean something like either... Uh, like this is an example of a grid line, or like this one. So each for four sides can partially cover two grid lines, um, but a partial cover a grid line. Well, we'll say half a grid line because two of them can cover a full grid line. Because of the total two and minus two grid lines, and each one can do at least like two, this forces this proves k is at least n minus one. Okay, well here we are. So I need to do a parody argument on the grid lines where I say something like, look, um, I don't, no, I, 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 I have faith in these rectangles. Like, I feel like I, it just doesn't feel like complex combo to me. Or, let me put this, this doesn't feel like any of the fancy things. And the reason it doesn't feel like any of the fancy things is because the rectangle condition is, like, really requires a grid or something like that. I don't know. Like, the rectangles are arbitrary size. You see the equality cases. Um, I don't know. Anyways. Sorry. So I claim for n even, this inequality is strict. Have I seen problems from the book? Then yes, I have. Because my claim is that you can never... Here's the grid lines in each direction. Why does it work to prove it for a 1 by 2 and minus 1? Thank you, Deepanshu 2017 for the follow. No, I think we're done. I, I don't know what you guys are doing, but I think this should work. Uh... I think this just works. Uh, actually, hang on. Do I have to worry? Okay, I guess there can be... I think it should be fine, though. Like, the, the claim is that, um, it's actually the odd case that's easier, surprisingly enough. Um, because you get a ground of k at least in minus one. But the point is, you look at these grid lines, and then a full-length rectangle, um, fully covers a grid line. Every grid line needs to be covered at least once. Um, a half, a rectangle that isn't full-length can partially cover some grid lines. And that's okay. Um, or alternatively, a full-length rectangle might be situated at the edge of the board. But... If equality held, this already gives you k at least n minus one because, um, yeah, that should be what it gives you. Hmm. 
Yeah, because each grid line either has a full length rectangle on it or it has two half um, not full length rectangles on it. And like these red ones. And in order for equality to hold, that must everything must be sharp. So every rectangle, every grid line has either a full length or a ha two half lengths. But then you look. Um, there's only there's 97 grid lines. Say there's 97 horizontal grid lines, for example. And the full length ones are just come in pairs. Um, the half length ones also won't really work. Um, in order to not have a pair you would get like some weird psycho crap. And that doesn't work either. It's annoying to write up, I think, to, to squeeze out to n to, to squeeze it to n instead of n minus one. But I'm, I'm like very confident this should work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, this is really hard for a 4, if this is the intended solution. <laughs> I have to say, like... It, for a 1, 4, I sort of expect the global argument to work out of the box. Um, but it doesn't. I have to, like, push the equality case. And it's not even an easy global argument, I think. The min number must be less than 98. Yeah, because we have a construction of 98. But I think I have a proof that it's... I have a proof that it's at least 97, and I'm pretty sure I have a proof that it's strictly greater than 97 because the parity of the grid lines is wrong.